In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the net present value using an HP 12C calculator. And first we'll look very briefly at the theory behind the net present value so you know what's actually going on. So net present value is simply the value of future cash flows in today's money. And the reason that we use the net present value is it helps us choose what investments to do. For example, we could uh, build a care home or we could pay debt at 5%. So if you were running a company that built care homes um, and it's, you're already got a lot of debt, you could be paying down that debt or you could be build, building more care homes. If building more care homes is going to make you a lot more money than paying down the debt, then you want to build the care home and leave the debt as long as you can if you're earning very high returns. And care homes have typically provided very good returns for those who have invested in them. Um, we could take 5% as what we call the discount rate or our target rate. So that's what the net present value calculation would be based on. Because it's like this is the alternative. You, you could get this return. So if you do something that gets less than this return, the thing that you're doing is pointless from a financial standpoint. And there's a certain rule that we use um, to decide on investments using net present value. Um, so if we were to calculate the net present value of this 5%, it would tell us what to do, which of these options A or B to take um, as your course of action. So if the net present value is positive, we would do A. That means that we're going to earn more money by building the care home than paying the debt. If net present value is zero, you maybe want to do A. But remember, when you're calculating net present value, it's very important to be aware that these are estimates of future cash flow. And if those estimates are off, then your net present value is going to be off. Um, so if you're at zero, it's suggesting, well, maybe it could in fact be negative. Maybe your estimates are overly generous. So you have to apply a degree of skepticism to your calculation of net present value. And of course, if the net present value is negative, you're going to look at doing B. Um, B is the lower risk option as well. You would take other factors into account, not just the net present value. And ideally, we want a high positive net present value. So if a project has an extremely high net present value, and it's so very, very positive, then there's a lot of leeway in the accuracy of the um, estimated cash flows so we can say with a high level of certainty that that's a good project to do. So now let's look at the examples. Um, so we'll start with even cash flows because they're slightly easier. So we'll just take the care home example again. Um, so imagine that we've got a care home that costs $1 million to build and generates 250000 of cash net each year for 20 years. A very simplified example, a care home that never increases its um, cash flow. It's always 250000 for 20 years. Um, so we're going to calculate the net present value with a 5% discount rate. And just extracting the information, which is quite simple to do, we're taking cash flow zero, that's our initial investment. This is a cash outflow, so we're making it negative, and that's $1 million. Um, cash flow one, we're going to call 250,000, and we've got 20 of those. So we'll just multiply this um, by 20 to make up our 20 cash flows. Um, or rather, we'll be storing 250,000 and then uh, the number 20 beside it to say that we've got 20 of those cash flows, all of the same value. And I is going to be 5%, though it's good to be aware that on this calculator, the I uh, memory automatically divides everything that goes into it by 100 to get you a percentage. You don't have to enter it as a percent, so we'll be entering just 5%. So, first step, enter cash flow zero. Not difficult, just type in 1 million. The commas help you do this. We want to change it to negative, so we use CHS, not negative. That puts a negative sign here, and by pressing G, and then present value, we put that into cash flow zero. The G functions let you access the functions in blue text. That's why the G key is in blue. So I'll enter I next. So simply pressing five and I, remember that's automatically divided by 100 when it's entered into I. 
then let's enter our cash flow 1 and N1. So simply type them in. So we've got 250,000 using the commas to help us. G, put that into payment, which is cash flow J. And then we've got um, the 20, it's over 20 years. So that cash flow is repeated 20 times. Then putting that into G. And then future value, you've got that N on the future value. And now we've got all the information that we need. So you can just press um, present value, function, then present value. And that calculates our net present value, which in this case is roughly um, 2,160,000. This is a very high, very positive um, net present value, which indicates that building this care home would be a very good investment. So I'll just clear that. Um, and we'll do another example, this time with an uneven cash flows. Just another very simple example. So I've not even given you a spiel for this one. So we've just got zero, one, two, three years. We're at these following cash flows. We can assume that after this, the whole investment's disappeared. The scrap value or whatever is nothing. It's gone. Um, and we're using the discount rate of 6%. Uh, it's good practice to always clear the calculator, but because you're replacing um, the entries, it's not usually as important, but it's good to get in the habit of clearing um, constantly, just in case your um, previous calculations start affecting your subsequent cal calculations. So just always do this um, function and then clear X, just making sure everything's clear all the time. So let's just carry out this example. First steps to enter CF not exactly the same way. So we've got um, 1,000, that's 10,000. Um, clear X is the button which clears just the display. So if you make a typo like that, uh, you can use that. What a change sign, it's an investment. We're doing just the same as we did before and then um, pressing G and then present value, put that into cash flow zero. Then we're entering each of these into um, cash flow J. J is just a counting number, so we've got cash flow one, cash flow two, and cash flow three. Um, and all of these are different, so we're not going to use the N function. So we've got 400 is going to go into G and then payment, which is your cash flow J, 300. G and then payment and then we've got 500 G and then payment um, our I 6 goes into I and then just f function and um, present value and we get the net present value of 64.17 so that's how you calculate the net present value for even and uneven cash flows. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and thank you for watching.